Father, we thank you. We'll give you praise. We worship you. Blessed be your holy name tonight. As we gather to pray, we ask that the windows of heaven be opened. We ask, O oh God, that you will bypass everyone, bypass every church, and listen to our prayers. Amen. We come as broken vessels. We come as broken clays. We come with hearts geared towards you, but it's broken due to what we see and feel and experience. Amen. And we come believing that you are going to touch us Amen. where we need your touch most. Amen. That your love will bring us peace. Amen. You'll bring us joy. Amen. And bring us that which no man can give to us. Amen. We believe that your word will heal us tonight. Amen. We believe that in your presence, there will be fullness of everything. Amen. The heaven will reign in our homes. Amen. The heaven will reign in our lives. Amen. The heaven will reign in everything we do. Amen. Lord, we subject every contrary spirit. Amen. We subject every demonic spirit. We, we subject every challenging spirit Amen. to our peace. We subject them to total and complete Complete destruction in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, because amen. your promises are here and amen. amen. And we believe that we are partakers of it. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And the people say, amen. Please, you can be seated. God bless you. It's so wonderful to see. As long as you hear me, it is beautiful to be here. I want you to go to 2 Timothy chapter number 2. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Second Timothy chapter number 2. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. And we are going to read from verse 1 to 7. I have listened to my friend speak from this verse for about three, four weeks, only one verse, but I'm going to take a lot of the verses. I want you to follow me and you are going to really enjoy yourself, like I'm going to enjoy myself. Second Timothy chapter number two, I'm going to read from verse one. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. This is Apostle Paul writing to young Timothy, a young pastor, and he's writing to him. And he's talking to him the way he's talking to us. He said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Verse 5, And if a man also strive for masteries, Yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Verse 6. The husband man that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Amen. Verse 7. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all Amen. things. Apostle Paul is writing to young Timothy and he is telling the young pastor Timothy exactly what we would like to hear at this particular time. He is raising some important points that will help us 
to go through what is going on at a particular time in the world, in our lives, in whatever we are doing. There is something that has been built into our system. And that, syst that thing is stability. Everybody wants stability. Every single person wants stability. And thank God I was raised in a very, very insta instable country. Where you can, anything can happen at any time. 20 things can happen in one hour. So in a way, my system has been built in such a way that um, you know that if I'm in a class if the teacher comes to teach on that day then it's a miracle because for the father you have a timetable and there are teachers does not mean that the teacher will come to teach you will see him in the school but he won't come to the class how many of you know what I'm talking about that is how unstable it is you see him, he, he won't come for, 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 for three months he won't enter the class one day he will enter a day before the exam and tell you, you have the syllabus, yes, exam is coming. So I built myself up to deal with any situation that comes. But I've stayed in Europe for some time now, so I'm beginning to imbibe their system that when you come into the house, the light is, the light, the, the, you don't have to worry whether the light, there's light or no light, there's light. You open the refrigerator, there's something to eat. You only need to select if it's what you like or not. And um, where you kept your shoe is there. If you park your car, when you get there, your car is still there. Nothing happened to it. And uh, more and more and more. So when little thing happens, I see people very, very worried. <laughs> that it can even affect their health. But here, Apostle Paul is telling Timothy, life is not like that. You are a soldier. Somebody say I'm a soldier. Yes. Somebody say I'm a soldier. Yes. You are a soldier recruited by Christ. Mm -hmm. You are a soldier recruited by Christ. And he said, as a soldier. Soldier. One of the things you must learn, as difficult as it is to say, my son, Timothy, is learn how to handle hard I'll read it again. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ, Jesus Christ. He said, endure hardness. That's hardship. Mm -hmm. He said, as you go through life, there's going to be hardship. It's going to be tough. I'm not telling you to have patience because patience is grade number one. I'm telling you to endure. You know, patience is grade number one. Grade number two is endure. Then grade number three is long suffering. Long, long, very long. <laughs> he told him to endure hardship. We have been taught that if you are a Christian, everything goes easy. Everything goes easy. You don't need to do anything. That's what you hear. If you just call on him, he will show up. But if I read my Bible, it's different. It's different. This is Paul telling a young pastor, endure hardness as a soldier of who? Christ. Christ is your commander. People are saying when you have Christ, everything is easy. It's not true. Let's, be, let's face the truth so that people can really love God for God. The only thing he tells us is that at the end of the day, we will have victory. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say we have victory. I will have victory. Somebody say we have victory. I will have victory. Somebody say we have victory. I will have victory. Somebody say as a as as a soldier of Christ. As a soldier of Christ. I will go through difficult times. I will go through difficult times. I will go through rough times. I will go through rough times. I will be oppressed. I will be oppressed. But at the end of the day, I will have victory. I will have victory. Amen. Amen. Wow. The Bible has told us that you can be crushed. Amen. You can be crushed, but you will not be finished. Amen. You will just bounce up like this, like Incredible Hulk. <laughs> you can be squeezed. Sometimes life will squeeze you. 
life, it will squeeze you like when you are squeezing orange. You will think you are going to, I don't know, I don't know some of you, uh, have you ever woken up one day, there is pain in every part of your body, every part, including inside the brain. It's like Michael Tyson came to beat you up in the night thoroughly. He didn't break the bones, but everywhere is like, you think the end has come. But before you know it, we are okay again. Amen. Why? Because the Lord is with you. Amen. This period has made me to heighten my belief of the word of God. You see, endure. If there is not going to be hardship, he won't tell you to endure anything. Somebody say amen. amen. If there is not going to be hardship, he won't tell you. He will just tell you, just... Get some warehouses where you put some good things because there will be no problem. <laughs> and he said, in this game of serving God, there are rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. There are rules of engagement. Mm -hmm. He said, you are in a race. Young Timothy, you are now a pastor. Very good for you. But you are in a race. And in that race, the only way you can win is to follow the rules and regulations. Yes. If you don't follow the rules and regulations, you are going to fail. I'm like, what? When I was teaching this thing to the people in the... I was teaching this thing some weeks ago. I said, you can never... You know, in football, there are rules, right? Mm -hmm. If the ball is coming and you suddenly just bend down and carry the ball with your hand. <laughs> what happens? The referee will blow. Yeah. It depends on where you carry it. If you carry it near penalty, glory to God for the other team. Also, if somebody is dribbling you, you decide to jump on him and grab him like this, and two of you fall on the ground, he's also not allowed. Is that true? Yes. In 100 meters, how many of you know 100 meters? You run on your lane. You run on what? You run on what? On your lane. If you suddenly begin to, you run to this lane, you run to the other lane, you run to the other lane, what will they do? Right. Even if you are disturbing the other, they will pursue you and pull you out. <laughs> so he's telling young Timothy, like athletics, like sports of all kinds, there are rules and regulations if you want to win. If you want to win, follow the rules and regulations. Otherwise, you will not win. The same thing with Christianity. You cannot serve God in your own way. He has stated clearly how he should be served. And it is clear in his constitution, which is the constitution of the kingdom of God, called the Bible. It is very, very clear. You cannot break it and expect things to work the way you want it. It will not work. So he was teaching this young man, like he's teaching all of us, there are rules of engagement. There are rules of engagement. In a normal war, there are rules of engagement. If you want to win, he said, look, there is a prize, but if you want to win, you have to follow the rules to win. There is no other way you can win except you follow the rules. Somebody say amen. amen. So as Christians, there are rules. It was not made by any leader. It was not made by any coordinator. It was not made by any pastor. It is God himself who wrote it with his own finger. He did not tell Moses, write it. No, he wrote it with his own finger. And he cannot make mistake about it. If we want to win in life, if we want to win in life, please listen to me and listen clearly. Follow the rules. Follow what? The rules. Follow the what? The rules. Follow the rules. Don't bend the rules. Don't try to be smarter than the rules. Don't try to say that God doesn't know anything you know better. Because he existed before the existence of time. Amen. Amen. And if I look at everything God has given to us, it's all expression of love towards, the, towards us. It's only expression of love. He said, Timothy, you know what? If you want to win, follow the rules. Follow the rules. Mm -hmm. Don't try to play games. Just follow the rules. And if you follow the rules, you're going to win. And he said, look, if you want to go far in life, let me read it, please. 
I said today we are going to just learn and then we'll pray. He said, verse 4, no man that warreth. We shall have other Bible translations here. Say, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. What does that mean? If you want to go far, if you are going to war, if you are going to war, you cannot get yourself involved with everything. You have to focus. You have to do what? 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 Focus. If there are too many things that are drawing your attention, you can't go far. You cannot go what? Far. Too many things. There are things you can do. Please listen to me. I have to learn this myself. There are things you can do, but you are not the best in it. Let people who are better than you do it. Amen. You cannot do everything. You will break down. And if you die, they will bury you. People will still be alive. Mm -hmm. Have you not observed that if you are not at work, somebody will do your work? Yeah. They will not close the company? I'm not telling you not to work, work. But that which you are not very, very good in it, and that is not your main thing to do, let somebody who is better do it. You do the one you are, you focus and do the one you are very, very good in. That's what he tell, he's telling Timothy. Timothy, you are the pastor. Don't try to be the janitor. Don't try to be the, um, the, the usher. Don't try to be the hospitality team person. Don't try to be in charge of equipment. Don't try to clean. Don't do everything. Because if you involve yourself in too many things, the task that God gave to you, you will forget it. Mm -hmm. And then you will not win. Some of us, the reason why we are weighed down is because we are carrying too many weights. Listen, I didn't say it's sin, but there are weights. There are weights. Some of the weights we carry now is social media. Do you know that some of us, our heart is beating like this if we have not opened our social media? We need to know what is going on. Quickly. The moment we close here now, the first thing most of us will do is to go to the telephone to check what are you checking. That is a weight. It has been discovered. Some of you will authenticate with me. It has been discovered scientifically and through research that social media is one of the reasons why a lot of people are getting depressed. Because before we don't know about the life of other people. Now we can just go there and check them. Those who are buying new cars, those who are buying new houses, those who are buying new dresses. And then you can weigh yourself. If you have not developed yourself to be satisfied with who you are, you begin to weigh yourself and say, maybe I'm not meeting up well. Maybe this one. Look at the dress he's wearing. And those little, little drops. Listen, there are little, little, little drops on your confidence. Little, little drops. On, before you know it's a big heap. And when you look yourself, you are a wreck. You don't even know who you are again. Because you have lost who you are. Mm. Apart from that one, news. There was one time I was following the news in my country. <laughs> Every day. One day I advised myself. <laughs> because I never read any good one. My temperature was going high. <laughs> I'm telling you to my temperature go high. Because yeah. I, I just I look at myself. I'm not in government. Yeah. What Bible told me is to pray for people in authority. I'm not in government. They didn't appoint me any position. I'm not living there. What is wrong with me? I can better just pray for them. And that's all. And I, I didn't stop completely. I reduced. Somebody say reduced. Reduce. Because when you have been doing something for a long time, it's difficult to stop it. Let's be truthful. I reduce it. Now, sometimes I just want to know and when I'm looking for, you know, what you look for is what you find. Mm -hmm. I look for the achievements. I can mention to you now at least five to six things that people from my country achieved worldwide this year, this month, this week. One person did operation, cancer of the, of the, of the liver also, that has never been done in the world. Did it from Lagos or Abuja. Three, three of my country people have been elected into the Congress in the U.S., do you want more? My president has given, I think, about 15 people who are, uh, they, are, they, are they made some discoveries. 
is going to give them money and all that to help them so that they can go further. And somebody sent him a mail that there are more people. Those are the things I want to hear. Because it helps me to be mentally sound. But I can tell you, on that place, there are more than 10,000 bad news. I didn't look at those ones. I only look at the good ones this time. And that's what I've trained myself to do. That's what Paul is telling Timothy. Don't entangle. Do you know entanglement? Mm -hmm. You know entanglement? Mm -hmm. When something is tied together, you cannot lose it. Mm -hmm. Don't put yourself in a situation where chewing gum will gum all your body. Mm -hmm. And you cannot come out. Amen. How many of you have ever had chewing gum in your hair? In your hair? <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> Real way chewing chewing gum. Or how many of you have stepped with chewing gum on your fine shoe? You raise it up, the thing follow you. <laughs> That's what he's telling us. Don't use the chewing gum and tie on your hair. Because if you want to remove that chewing gum from your hair, there is no way your hair will not follow. And nobody wants to lose his hair. So when you have entangled yourself with the affairs of life, when you want to untangle yourself, it will affect you. It will change who you are. It will alter who you look, how you look at things. It will change your service of life. That's what he's telling him. He's telling you, say, focus on, on yourself and focus on God. Amen. Stop looking here, there, Amen. there, there. Amen. It did not start today. It started a long time ago. Amen. I've learned it. I don't compare myself with people. I compare myself with myself. Amen. And I keep on improving myself. Amen. Is somebody hearing me? Amen. He said, if a man strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. I'll to explain that one. Then this verse 6 is, this one, I just love it. How many of you have been fasting since we started fasting? Amen. Amen. How many of you have been following the prayer points I've been sending? Amen. <laughs> and some teachings. <laughs> Let me now show you one thing. This is one of the reasons why it's so beautiful to follow God. Amen. Paul always reveals the secret. Paul, if you want to know the secret of heaven, read the, gospel, the, the, the epistles of Paul. He said, the husband man that laboreth must be first. Somebody say, I must be first. I, I must, must be, be first. first. Oh, please say it. I must be first. I must be first. He said, must first be, must be first partaker of the fruits. Mm -hmm. My message is first partaker. Mm -hmm. You know what he's saying here? Anything that you are laboring for, you are the first person to partake. Mm -hmm. And Paul is using the allegory or the illustration of a farmer. He said, the farmer who works hard in his garden when the fruit begins to come, he's the first person to taste it. He's the first person to eat it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, he used the word fruit here. He didn't use seed. All of you have been praying. Most of the prayers you have been praying are intercession prayers. I can hear some of you say, when is he going to send us a prayer that has to do with us? No. As you are sowing the seed in the life of somebody, you'll be the first person to partake it. Amen. Everything you are doing for people, when the benefit come, you will be the first person to benefit. He said, if you planted mango, and now the mango has grown, and it has fruit, you will be the first person to pluck it. You pluck the mango, you go to the running water. Running water. You wash this mango, you wash it very well, you clean it. You take the first bite, cram. Mm, you taste it. After you finish eating it, you finish it, you pluck another one, you eat, and then when you are going home, you take some. You give madame and children. But you are the first person to taste it. If it's tomatoes in the farm, you see the first red tomatoes, you pluck it, you wash it, you are the first person to taste it. 
What does this mean? It means that your labor is not in vain. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, my labor is not in vain. My labor is not in vain. When the reward comes, when the reward comes I will be the first person to taste it. I will be the first person to taste it. You know, when you are laboring, it looks as if nothing is going to work. It looks as if nothing is going to come out. It looks as if nothing good will ever come out. But I can assure you, the Bible cannot fail. That labor of yours, when it begins to bring fruit, you will be the first person to take the first fruit. Somebody say amen. amen. When my children started working a few years ago, you know, they went to pluck. I don't know whether it is. What did you go pluck again? Pesos, I don't know. Kessin. I think Daniel worked for one or two days and my daughter worked for some time. She was very calm. I, they went there and I went to watch it with them with Basico. That day I was panting because I've not used Basico for a long time. <laughs> then when they started, I went with my car and went to observe it. I was just waiting. I said, these are my fruits. Mm. When they pay them the little salary, I said, I bring it in. <laughs> bring for Papa. Quick, 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 quick. They submitted it in the envelope. I said, ah, first fruit. I lifted it up. I thanked the Lord that my children worked at all. Mm. Mm. And I told my wife, oh, I, said, I said, listen, you don't understand this principle. The laborer must first be the of the of, of this mango. It's not about money. I'm partaking first. I left it on my table for some time. Then I took, I ate from it and released it back. Then I pay your tight and back. They thought that is finished. Ah! That one was not very, that was a mango. Apple is coming now. They moved to another level again. And when they did that one, I said, this one is apple. Bring it again. And then I take it again. And then they move again. This time, <laughs> some of you say, how many times will he finish? He doesn't finish. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. It depends on the fruit. Wow. If I feel that it's cashew, I say bring cashew. <laughs> if it's cucumber, I say bring cucumber. It's depending. If they buy a new car today, they come to show me, I will drive it around. <laughs> Why? Why? I have labored for them. Yes. And I pray for you today that your labor shall not be in vain in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. You shall not labor and another eat in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. He tells us here clearly that whatever we are doing is not in vain. It does not matter whether the person is thanking you or not. Look, I'm just talking about human reward. There are some that you cannot even get Amen. human reward, but Amen. God in heaven who sees you and rewards you adequately will not leave you without being rewarding you. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. God will reward you. You have been praying for some people that don't even know you are praying for them. Since this whole thing started, you've been praying for them, fasting for them, praying for them, fasting for them. They don't even know. But God we reward you. When the breakthrough comes, God will not leave you. You know, before the person will receive the breakthrough, your own portion will be removed. First. First. You cannot be praying for peace for somebody's family. You will not have peace yourself. It's not possible. Patika. You put fruit there. To get to fruit is hard labor. Yeah. You don't just get fruit. Fruit comes from seed. Mm -hmm. And to be able to plant and wait for it to grow, to germinate, grow, you have to water it. You have to keep on maintaining it until the fruit level. Do you know that nobody notices you until there is fruit? Mm -hmm. People don't notice you until you have fruit. Mm -hmm. When you have fruit, then people start coming. And there's another good characteristics of a good, a good tree that produces good fruit. You know, when we're growing up, there is something we call ube, pie. Plum, they call it plum in English. I bought some of them uh, recently again. <laughs> the one that is very tasty, it suffers a lot. Children are always under it with heavy stone. They won't even allow it to even get uh, bluish. 
they will be hammering it with stone. There are always people on top of it. They are ready to risk their life. If, because if the owner catch you, where I grew up from, those very tasty plum, they put one thing on it. They put something on it. If you climb, if you climb it, all your body will be scratching you until you go and confess. The person will do something for you. Be okay. I never believe the other thing because I cannot climb. But the thing is, I remember one time, people were going through it. So the whole village said, nobody should put that in again on the tree. If you climb it, your body will be scratching you like this. On, you will go to the person and confess. He will do one thing, you'll be okay. So they told them not to do it again because there were too many young people. Small, small boys. The one that is not tasteful, he will not be there. Nobody will even throw stone on it. <laughs> But the one that is tasteful, a lot of stones. So some of you, people are throwing stones at you because you carry fruit that is very tasteful. If you don't want persecution, you don't want people to gossip about you, you don't want people to backbite you, you don't want people to castigate you down, you don't want people to talk about you, then you don't have to have fruit. Or you better have a bitter one. <laughs> because as long as you have good fruit, stones must come to you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. The laborer, the intercessor, the worker in the church, that mother, that father, that brother, that sister, that one who spends his or her time helping other people, that one who is always thinking about other people and the good welfare of other people. The one who takes care of other people's children. When the reward comes, will be the first person to partake Amen. of that pain. That's what the Bible says. And then verse 7, he said, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all Things. I want you to say, Oh Lord, oh Lord, Lord give, me give me understanding in all things. In all things. Amen. Amen. I want you to meditate on this scriptures. Romans verse 1. I want you to meditate on these scriptures from verse 1. Read it in different different translations. You will, you will get the, 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 the juice that is in it. This is one of the things we as Christians now should. You know, some people are fighting and quarreling and arguing over whether Trump will win or Biden will win. I mean, what is your business then? If I told you a few months ago who is going to be, will you believe me? Focus. Don't entangle yourself in things that are not your business. Don't try to talk to solve the problem God did not ask you to solve. Don't try to involve yourself in things that will not produce anything for you. Focus yourself and you will be productive. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Shall we pray? Can we stand and pray? I want you to just call on the Lord. Say, Lord, give me insights. Father, I need insights. I need insights. Because without insight, you will not know what to do. If you don't have insight, what Paul was telling Timothy is you need to have insight. If you don't have insight, you will just be beating the bush. Give me insight, give me insight, give me insight. Lord, give me insight, give me insight, give me insight. Give me insight to my own life. I want you to pray this time. Just pray, 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 pray. Give me insight into my life. Reveal to me things that I need to know about myself. Give me insight, oh Lord. Give me insight, give me insight. I need insight into my life. I need insight into my life. Give me insight. Give me insight. Open my eyes to see things that I need to see. Show me the positive things that I need to see and the negative things that I need to stop. Give me insight. In Jesus' name, I want you to ask the Lord for understanding. Understanding. He said here in verse 7, Consider what I say, and the Lord give 
understanding in all things. Mm -hmm. Consider. That means what I've told you, you don't need to accept it because I said it. Weigh it. And when you have finished weighing it, before you start throwing anything away, ask God to give you understanding. Mm -hmm. He said, consider it. Weigh it very well. Check it. If this, what I've told you, is correct or not. But before you do anything, ask God to give you understanding. Amen. I want you to ask God to give you understanding from what you hear today. Amen. Say, Father, give me understanding. Give me understanding about this race, about the enduring. Give me understanding, oh Lord. Give me understanding. I want understanding. Father, give me understanding. Give me understanding. In Jesus' name, we need to be very militant now. I want you to ask the Lord for wisdom. Insight is about knowledge. Understanding comes from knowledge. And wisdom is the reaction. I want you to ask God to give you wisdom. Wisdom. That you don't only have insight because God can show you what you should change. He can make you understand why you should change it. But if you don't change it, God will not change it himself. So begin to ask him for wisdom. Wisdom, 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 Father, give me wisdom. I need your wisdom, O oh Lord. Wisdom in my home, wisdom in my church, wisdom in my relationship, wisdom in my marriage, wisdom with my children, wisdom at work, wisdom in the ministry, wisdom with relationship with people, wisdom with my speech. Father, give me wisdom. I need your wisdom in my ministry. Give me wisdom, give me wisdom, wisdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. I want you to ask the Lord for divine guidance. He said the path of a righteous man is ordered by God. Why does he need to add order you so that you don't go different places? It's not every route that you take. It's not every path that you take. It's not everything you do that is the right thing. It may look good, but it's not godly. <laughs> so ask the Lord for guidance. Ask him for guidance. Because he can never mislead you. Just ask him for guidance. Father, give your children guidance. Give them guidance. Give us guidance. Holy Spirit, guide us. Guide us, guide us, guide us, guide us in what we are doing. In Jesus' name, ask the Lord for light. Light is when something is open. Whatever you don't know is in darkness. And whatever you have not opened is dark. If they give you a gift, you don't open it, it's still in dark. But when you put light into it, then you see what is in it. So some of you don't have light. You don't have light in certain things. Because how do I know the way you talk about that thing? If you have light in something, you begin to enjoy that thing. Yes. Some people, when you tell them about obedience, they are like, it's a negative word. No. It's not a negative word. God said, if you want to. In fact, one of the first things you do with God is obedience. What is obedience? Obedience is, I trust you, and I'm going to do what you ask me to Amen. do. But if you don't have the light on it, you'll be struggling with it. I spoke to somebody recently about what is going on now. And the person doesn't even have light. I said, this thing is real. Huh? Really? Yeah! Oh, you mean they are not tricking us? I said, who is tricking you? You need light. Ask God to give you light. Come on, begin to pray. Give me light. I need light. Expose anything that is hiding. Anything that is hiding can deceive you, but when you have light, it cannot deceive you. Light! Light! 
light in my marriage, light in my children, light in my finances, light in the church, light in as a worker. Give me light, oh God, in my business. Give me light on how to relate with people. In Jesus' name, I want you to ask God to give you strength to stand. If you look at all the things he told uh, Timothy, you cannot do that with human strength. That's why you need grace. He started by saying, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You can't do any of these things by your own power or intelligence. You need grace. So I want you to pray, God, give me strength to stand. Begin to say, give me strength. I need the grace to stand. Grace to do things I need to do. In Jesus' name. Ask the Lord to help you with faithfulness. Because what Paul was telling Timothy is that you need to be faithful. It's not one day joining. It's a marathon race. You have to keep on running until the end. If you need the crown, you have to run till the end. Amen? Amen. Pray for faithfulness and commitment. Father, faithfulness and commitment. To do what is placed in my hand. Father, give me... I need commitment. I need faithfulness. I want to be faithful, God. I want to be faithful. 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 In Jesus' name. How many of you did spoon race? When you were growing up, how many of you did spoon race? Oh yeah, I did it. They put egg in a spoon yeah. and you have to run. <laughs> how many of you did that race? Yes. Very interesting. Yeah. Do you know that ministry is like that? Ministry is like spoon race. If you are a worker in the church, what you are asked to do is a spoon race. If you are a wife, you are in a spoon race. If you are a husband, you are in a spoon race. Anything you are doing in this world is a spoon race. Why? You have to protect that egg. It doesn't matter who carries first or last. Because those who hurry away, the egg can fall off. Yes. What is important is that you get to the end yes. with the egg. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 <laughs> That's why some people in their marriage, they take the thing, they think it's a hundred meters. They run the egg form and the egg is broken. They go back, there's no more egg left. Mm -hmm. Better be running and protect the egg. Yeah. And you know why you are running, you are looking at the egg, you are looking to where you are going. <laughs> You can't run too fast. And you, you do you know that I love that race. You cannot look side by side. Eh? You only your egg where you are going. Your egg where you are going. Your egg where you are going. And you cannot think something else during that race. Even if your friend is shouting, hey, hey, you don't even look. The only time you look is when you get to the end. You raise your hands. It doesn't matter who was first or last. At least you got there with your egg. Amen. So I want you to pray. Father, what you have placed in my hand, I will not allow to fall in the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to pray. What you have placed in my hand, it is not going to fall. It's not going to break. I'm going to finish the rest. Carry what you have given to me. My children, I will not let fall. My home, I will not let fall. Whatever it may be, I will not let it fall. I will finish well. It can be heavy. It can be tiring. It can be painful. I will finish well. I will not let it fall. 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 I will protect it. I will guide it. I will carry it. I will not fail, O God. In Jesus' name. Pray for obedience. Obedience is doing what God wants you to do at the right time. Not when you like it at the right time. You're running your race. You don't. When they say your man said go, you say I will go later. People be going and coming. No, nobody does that. You go when they say go. Pray that God will give you the grace to obey. In everything, begin to pray. Come on. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, 
the Lord for grace, so job of God to pay. In all things, so job of God to pay. In Jesus' name, Amen. pray for grace to endure hardship. Because hardship looks as if it's one of the ingredients we need for success in life. When it is tough, God is in it. When it is sweet, God is in it. When your legs are paining you, God is in it. So pray for grace to endure hardship. Please don't pray to th that hardship will not come because the Bible did not say hardship will not come. Hardship will come. So for people say, Father, I, Pastor, I pray that uh, hardship will not come. That's the wrong prayer. Bible already said it will come. Amen. The only thing is, give me the power to endure it. Amen. The pain that I'm going through now, Father, give me the power to endure it. Amen. So that when I come out of it, greater things will happen in my life in Jesus' name. Begin to pray. Come on, pray, 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 pray. We have some few minutes to go. Give me the grace to endure as a soldier. As a soldier. In Jesus' name, you need patience to wait for the fruit. Amen. Sometimes we don't wait for the fruit to mature. Amen. And then we abandon the farm. Mm -hmm. Or we abandon the child. Or we abandon whatever we are doing. Because our own time that the fruit will come, not come. Do you know that the tree will produce fruit whenever it wants? Mm -hmm. so, so pray. Say, Father, Give me the patience to wait for the fruit. Even if it's taking long, I will wait. Your business may be at the edge of getting something. Wait. Your children may be at the edge of turning around. Wait. Your marriage may be at the edge of turning around. Wait. Your ministry may be waiting to take off. Wait. Patience is important. Let's begin to pray. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Father, give me patience. Patience to endure. So that I can be a partaker. 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 In Jesus' name. I've written a prayer point which I touched somewhere. Uh, just, it's about touch bearer. You know, touch bearers are always like this. Maybe I'll send it to you. I want you to say, Father, let me be a touch bearer. <coughs> Make me a touch bearer in the name of Jesus. Make me a touch bearer. Carrying the light of the ministry. Carrying the light of the church. Make me a, a touch bearer. If you are a touch bearer of the church, when good things come, you will be the first to take. Make me a touch bearer. Let me carry the touch of the church. So I can be a partaker. In Jesus' name, Amen. I want you to pray one prayer seriously. Somebody say, Father, Father every, negative every negative fruit planted by the devil, planted by the devil and, his agents, and his agents, I shall not be a partaker of it. I shall not be a partaker of it. Amen. 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 The Bible says, Why men slept? Mm -hmm. The enemy. So you can be planting good things and the enemy will sneak in when you just doze off. So I want you to take this prayer again. Say, Father, Father every wrong fruit. Every wrong fruit. Let's take it this way. Say, Father, Father, every tree. Every tree that I did not plant. That, that I did, I did not plant in my life. In my life. In my family. In my family. In my marriage. In my marriage. In my business. In my business. In my finances. In my finances. In my church. In my church. In my ministry. In my ministry. Die. 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 I shall not harvest. I shall not harvest any fruit. Any fruit that I did not plant. That I did not plant. That was sown. That was sown by the enemy. By the enemy. Amen. 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 Are we ready? I want you to say, I shall not. I shall not build. Build. And another inhabit. I shall not inhabit. I shall not. Build, I shall not build, and another take from me. And another take from me. I shall not plant, I shall not plant, and another reap the fruit, and another reap the fruit of my labor, of my labor, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shall not raise my children, I shall not raise my children, and they abandon me, I they abandon me for any reason, for any reason. No one, no one, no voice, no voice, no power, no power can take my children from me, can take my children from me. 
I cancel. I cancel every demonic cancel. Every demonic cancel given to my children. Given to my children against me. Against me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every negative cancel. Every negative cancel given by anybody. Given by anybody or group of people. Or group of people or agents. Or agents or whatever they call themselves. Or whatever they call themselves to my children. To my children to be against me. To be against me. I cancel it by the blood. 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 Amen. Say every evil influence. Every evil influence in the life of my children. In the life of my children. Misleading them. Misleading them. Misguiding them. Misguiding them. I nullify. I nullify. And erase completely. I erase completely. My children. My children are profitable. Are profitable in every season. In every season of their life. Of their life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me explain this to you. You know, some people accept, oh, they are teenagers, that's why they have problems. Oh, it's the early adulthood, that's why they are trouble. Oh, they are going through midlife crisis. Oh, you know, it's the age. No, 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 no. I didn't see Jesus misbehave all along. The only time he got lost, he was in the church. They found him there reading. All those things are psychology. I want you to repeat this now. My children, my children are profitable. Are profitable in every season. In every season of their life. Of their life. Amen. I shall live long. I shall live long. To enjoy. To enjoy blessings. The blessings of my children. Of my children. For me. For me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shall not die. I shall not die. But live long. But live long. Fulfill to fulfill the purpose of my life. The purpose of my life. In, the in the name of Jesus. I shall see my children. I shall see my children grow. 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 And become men. And become men. And women. And women. I shall not bury my children. 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 Amen. 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 I shall enjoy the good labors of my hand. I shall enjoy the good labors of my hand. When I'm enjoying my labor, when I'm enjoying my labor, I will be strong. I will be strong. I will not be sick. I will not be sick. I will not be moved up and down. I will not be moved up and down. I will be strong. I will be strong. I make my own decision. I make my own decision because I labor for it. Because I labor for it. Amen. Amen. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, Lord, let my voice, let my voice be significant, be significant to my family, to my family. Oh Lord, oh Lord, let my voice, let my voice be significant to my children, be significant to my children. When my children hear my voice, when my children hear my voice, let it be different, let it be different, let it be a voice of of reason, let it be a voice of reason, let it be a voice of a parent, let it be a voice of a parent. Voice of love. Let, let, voice of love. love. let my voice. Let my voice mean something to my children. Mean something to my children. Let my voice. Let my voice not be like ordinary voice. Not be like ordinary voice. Let my voice. Let my voice bring healing to my children. Bring healing to my children. Let my voice. Let my voice bring comfort to my children. Bring comfort to my children. Let my voice. Let my voice bring direction to my children. Let my voice. Let my voice heal my children. Children internally. Amen. Say, Father, Father, raise my children. Raise my children. Be your servant. Be your servant. To become pillars. To become pillars in this world. In this world. And in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Let my children. Let my children. Not be lost in the world. Not be lost in the world. Whatever they put their hands. Whatever they put their hands. Let it prosper. Let it prosper. Let them be a light. Let them be a light. Placed on top of the hill. Placed on top of the hill. And it's shining all over. It's shining all over. Let them be salt. Let them be salt of the world. Of the world. Amen. Amen. Say, Father. Father. Thank you. Thank you for gathering my family, for gathering my family around me, around me, and giving us, and giving us love, love, peace, peace, and progress, and progress. Say, Father, Father, thank you, thank you for gathering my family, for gathering my family, for gathering my children, for gathering my children, my sons and daughters, sons and daughters around me, around me, and giving us, and giving us peace, peace, love, 
Love. Love. And progress. And progress. Amen. Amen. I shall not be dispossessed. I shall not be dispossessed of my children. Of my children. By any enemy. By any enemy. No force. No force. Can take my child from me. Take my child from me. Like a hen. Like a hen. I cover my children. I cover my children. The hawk. As a hawk. Cannot snatch anyone from me. Cannot snatch anyone from me. Amen. So as a hen gathers, as a hen hen gathers his chicks, his his chicks and, protect them and protect them from predators. From predators. From predators. That's what I'm doing tonight. That's, That's what, what I'm doing tonight. tonight. I cover my children. I cover my children. I bless my children. I bless my children. I bless them. I bless them. I bless them. I bless them. If I was angry with them, if I was angry with them, they offended me before. If they offended me before. Right now. Right now. I forgive them. I forgive them. Because God forgave me. And I bless them. 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 I bless everything they do. I bless everything. I bless their coming in and their going out. I bless their coming in and their going out. I bless their hands. I bless their hands. I bless their mind. I bless their mind. I bless their work. I bless their work. I bless their education. I bless their I bless their relationships. I bless their home. I bless their home. I bless them now. I bless them now. I bless my children now. They will not fail again. They will not fall again. They will keep on climbing now. Any obstacle that has been climbing on them and stopping them and keeping them down and using the excuse that I'm angry. Now I've forgiven them. Therefore, I break every chain. I break every chain. I break every chain. I break every chain. Let progress locate them now. Let progress locate them now. Physical progress. Relationship progress. Financial progress. Progress in business. Be progress at work. Let help us locate them. Let help us locate them. Let people seek them out. To help them. Them. To help them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, Father, Father I thank you. I thank, thank you for answering my prayers. For answering my prayers. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord a clap of praise.